Good morning. Welcome to Unity North Spiritual Center. I'm Reverend Kathy. Whoever you are, wherever you are on your spiritual path, you're welcome at Unity. We're glad you're with us today. We're an inclusive community. We welcome and accept all people. And we're also part of a greater worldwide Unity movement. We are the publishers of the Daily Word magazine. And we've been holding 133 years of prayer vigil through Silent Unity, the prayer ministry of the Unity Movement. So prayer is the heart and soul of unity. And um, we have prayer chaplains that pray with us every week. Oh, and today, today's is live, Wendy. Wendy's here um, as our prayer chaplain and she'll be available right after service, either here in person or on Zoom. And um, not on Zoom, I'm sorry, on the phone. So you, after the Zoom call is over, you can give her a call on the phone and she'll, she'll uh, pray with you. And her number will be shown at, on the chat and during announcements today. So thank you, Wendy. Today we have uh, Tracy Roloff and Nancy Helbig as our, as our sound team. So our, our service producers, let's give them a hand. And we have Rhonda Italiano as our worship assistant. And our musician today is Judy Benar. Let's give her a warm welcome. <laughs> and before our opening song, we'll just speak our vision and mission statements together. All right, our vision together. Centered in prayer, we create for all a world of love, harmony, and abundance. And our mission is celebrating spirit, exploring truths, awakening hearts, inspiring dreams, serving community. And you see our values at the bottom. These are the core beliefs that we hold here at Unity North. And with that, I invite you to stand as we sing our opening song together. God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings, God gives me everything I need. Love, love is my source, love is my power, love gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. Love gives me everything I need. Joy, joy is my source. Joy is my power. Joy gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. Joy gives me everything I need. Peace is my source, peace is my power, peace gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings, peace gives me everything I Sing, God is my source, God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need. And we have friends here in the sanctuary. So we want to make sure that everyone has been properly welcomed. So this is your opportunity to wave to someone from across the way. You can wave at the camera in the back to say hi to our friends on Zoom. There we go. All right. Do we have anyone online who is joining us for the first time? Anyone new to our community? 
I can only see part of the screen. I don't see any. All right. How about in the house? Anybody who's new today, if you want to raise your hands and let us know. There you are. Awesome. <laughs> Welcome. Can you tell us your first names? Yeah. Jeff and Jim. Very good. We're happy to have you join us. Thank you. All right. So after we have welcomed one another, we can settle into some time for prayer. So we will take a moment for prayer requests. So whatever may be on your mind or on your heart this morning, I invite you to take a deep breath and we will hold that prayer silently with you now. give thanks for answered prayer. Remaining in this prayerful presence, we will share the daily word. The word for today, Sunday, March 26th, is joy. I draw from my wellspring of joy. There are so many ways to express joy. I may speak words of praise that bring the awareness of even more blessings to mind. I may take joyful action, my every step aglow with the light of God, enlivening all I do. I celebrate the playful joy of every child, especially the child within me. I experience the same happiness whether I am in the heart of a busy city or in the stillness of nature. And then there is the quiet joy of just being, the richest joy of all. I rediscover my joy by taking slow, deep breaths, tapping into my wellspring of well-being that never runs out. I feel its energetic flow spilling over into my heart and life. What joy to be a spiritual being, a precious child of God. From Luke 2 10 we read but the angel said to them do not be afraid for see i am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people the word for today is joy Surely the presence of God is in this place. I can feel the mighty power and grace. There's a holy hush among us. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of God is in this place surely the presence of god is in this place i can feel the mighty power and grace there's a holy hush among us i see glory on each face surely You just sit back, and close your eyes, prepare for meditation. Just take several deep breaths as you begin to relax your body and your mind. Feel that wave of relaxation move from the top of your head down to the bottom of your feet. As you say to yourself, I am completely and fully relaxed. And allow me to say the words for you, speak, speak the words for you, taking them in as your own. It is not I, but the Christ within who does the work. I invite the Christ presence into my life now 
and I release and let go of any cares or concerns. I turn them over and let them dissolve away in the light of spirit. The Christ heals my spirit, soul, and body now in this moment. I am whole, well, and free. And the Christ is not a person, but a force. It is the true healing energy, the consciousness of unconditional love and compassion. The Christ now empowers me in my healing. I am a channel for the healing light, a living vessel for the birth of love on the planet Earth. And just as Jesus the man was rightly called the Christ, because he was completely identified with the force of love that flowed through him, so too am I connected to that same force of love. I too know my identity as a child of God. I know that the Christ calls to me, calls to each of us, to share in that identity. He reaches out in a call for saviors of the world, beckoning all who would invoke the Christ's power in the healing of the planet and all who share its life. That love is extended to each of us now, inviting us to join the force of all men and women who will bear witness to the truth of our perfect light. The Christ presence is looking for healers, for mystics, for prophets. If we are willing, we simply acknowledge his presence. The time has come to lay aside our worldly burdens and live for God alone. This is our destiny to become Christed beings, standing in and for the truth. Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Now reflect on this commandment to love one another as he loved for a few moments in the silence. Love is the shining glory of all creation. Every being that has ever lived, every soul that has ever breathed, every heart that has ever beat, has been only for the sake of love. This day we give thanks for the fire of love that ignites our hearts with compassion for all. And for that we say, thank you, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Will they gild their houses? 
in preparation for the king. And they line their sidewalks with every sort of shiny thing. They will be surprised when they hear him say, Take me to the alley. Take me to the afflicted ones. Take me to the lonely ones who somehow lost their way. Let them hear me say, I am your friend. Oh, welcome to my table. Rest here in my garden. You will have a pardon. Preparation for the key, and we lie in our sidewalks with every sort of shiny thing. We will be surprised when we hear. Take me to the alley. Take me to the afflicted ones. Take me to the lonely ones who somehow lost their way. Let them hear me say. I am your friend. Come to my table. Rest here in my garden. You will have a pardon. You will have a pardon. Thank you, Judy. Well, since Easter is upon us, I decided to talk about the healing stories of Jesus today. Reading biblical stories about Jesus' power to heal has always bolstered me, encouraged me. You know, we all have that healing power within us. And I like to think about some of the stories. The woman with the hemorrhage who merely reached out and touched his garment. Or seeing in my mind the, the blind man at the, at the pool of Siloam who had mud put on his eyes by Jesus and had his sight restored when Jesus asked him to wash it off in the water. Or thinking of the paralyzed man lowered through the roof and then who took up his mat and walked at Jesus' command. There are so many stories, story after story in the Gospels that demonstrate Jesus' power 
to heal the sick. If you or a loved one is going through a health crisis, consider the stories of Jesus. They will encourage you and offer hope because they're not simply about a healer who lived in the past, but about a divine presence that lives for and within us all, even today. Remember that Jesus, or we can say the Christ presence, enters in the midst of all circumstances. Sickness is just another opportunity to draw even closer. And when we do, we can receive the peace that surpasses all human understanding. So a woman had been bleeding for 12 years. She came up behind Jesus and touched his clothes. And she said to herself, if I can just touch his garment, I will be well. And Jesus turned and saw the woman and said, fear not. You are now well because of your faith. And at that moment, she was healed. Jesus went to every town and village. He taught in their meeting place, the places, and he preached the good news about the kingdom within. And Jesus also healed every kind of disease and sickness. And as he was going into a village, 10 men with leprosy approached him, and they stayed at a distance and called out, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And so he told them, return to the priests and show yourselves to them. And as they turned to go, they were immediately healed. And when one of them realized it, he came back and he shouted praises to God and bowed to Jesus and thanked him. And there was a centurion whose servant had palsy, which is a form of paralysis. And back then, if someone had palsy, within a few days they would die. And so he heard that Jesus was in Capernaum, and he sought him out to heal his servant. And when he found him, he told him of the servant's palsy. And Jesus agreed to go to his home and heal the servant. But the centurion was a humble man with a lot of faith. And he said, no, I am not worthy for you to enter my home. But I believe that all you have to do is say the word and my servant will be healed. He believed in authority. He knew he could be healed from a distance. And the moment he said that and believed, the healing took place. And he left in great confidence knowing that it had been done. So, during his lifetime, Jesus was primarily known as a healer and an exorcist. People flocked to him drawn by his wonder-working reputation. As the Gospels report again and again, his fame spread and great crowds followed him. Almost nobody believes that the preserved stories of Jesus are accurate in all details, but few scholars would deny that there were cures that actually occurred in Jesus' presence and were understood by the patients, the observers, and Jesus himself as miracles performed by him. Such cures made him famous. To understand their importance, we must remember that ancient Palestine had no hospitals or insane asylums. And so the sick and the mentally ill had to be cared for by their families in their homes. And the burden of caring for them was also often severe, and sometimes, especially in cases of violent insanity, more than the family could bear. The afflicted were turned out of doors and left to wander the streets. So lingering and debilitating diseases were common, and the victims of these two had to be cared for at home. Accordingly, many people eagerly sought cures. Doctors were inefficient, rare, and expensive. When a healer appeared, 
a person who could perform miraculous cures and who did so for nothing, he was sure to be mobbed. With each cure, the reputation of his powers, the expectations of the crowd and the legends and rumors about him would grow. Well, Marcus Borg, author and scholar, said Jesus was a spirit person. So one of those persons in human history to whom the spirit was an exceptional reality. Spirit persons become mediators of the sacred. Sometimes they speak the word or will of God. Sometimes they mediate the power of God in the form of healings and or exorcisms. Sometimes they function as game finders or rainmakers in hunting and gathering and early agricultural societies. And sometimes they become charismatic warriors or military leaders. What they all have in common is they become funnels or conduits for the power or wisdom of God to enter this world. They're delegates of the tribe to another layer of reality, mediators who connect their communities to the spirit. So Jesus was a remarkable healer. You know, more healing stories are told about him than anyone in the Jewish tradition. So not all mystics become healers, but he did. And he gathered quite a crowd of followers, many of them who left their past completely behind. He must have been an, a very compelling person when we think about it. He also managed to create a lot of enemies, enemies especially with the rich and the powerful. The other thing is, you know, he was very young. When we think about it, he only lived into his early 30s. It's kind of hard to imagine that in one way. He only lived into his early 30s, and his public activity uh, only took place for one year, according to the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Maybe three or four years, according to the Gospel of John. So that's not very long. And when you think about it, the founders and the spiritual heads of the major world religions all lived long lives. They spent decades active and serving, where Jesus' very short life had such an amazing impact. An amazing impact. As a matter of fact, he had to have been such a remarkable person, it's no wonder his followers are said to have exclaimed, what manner of man is this? Children have responded to questions about the story surrounding him. I know you've heard some of these, but they're always funny. One said Jesus was born because Mary had an immaculate contraption. Another said when, when Mary heard she was the mother of Jesus, she sang the Magna Carta. A young boy answered a question about the birth. When the three wise guys from the east side arrived, they found Jesus and the manager. And several more. Jesus enunciated the golden rule, which says to do one to others before they do one to you. And the people who followed Jesus were called the 12 decibels. Also, the epistles were the wives of the apostles. <laughs> well, Jesus said we can all do what he did, and even greater things. We all have access to the healing power. This ministry has always been very involved in and interested in healing. It's part of our legacy from the co-founders of Unity, the Fillmores, who you know, really began the whole movement through their healings. So healing is very important in unity and unity worldwide. Through COVID, we lost some of our healers here, although some remain. And it's just been the way of it through COVID throughout the country. But 
I think the most important thing when we think about all of us having healing power, the first prerequisite is that we put God first, that we always remember to put God first. It's like when the chaplains are trained to pray with you, they know that before they even start the prayer, they feel their own connection with God. And that's the most important thing. Put God first. And then heal from that place or be healed from that place. My sister Cheryl just passed away 12 days ago, as many of you know. And she was a healer for many years. She and I um, shared that. I used to do reconnective healing. And together we trained in the Ewan method and matrix energetic different modalities of healing. And she really became very proficient, proficient in Ewan and matrix energetics and had clients for a number of years. And uh, was very gifted in that respect. But um, the last 12 years of her life were really very, very difficult. And when she passed away though, there was really an incredible miracle of grace, I could say. She, um, over the last month, wasn't very conscious. I mean, she was in the hospital first, and then they had to move her to a nursing home with hospice care. And during that time, she was in and out, and her daughter, Jennifer, was with her, would go in every day to see her. And sometimes she could understand what my sister would say, and other times not. But um, So more and more she became less and less conscious. And finally, the day before she passed, Jennifer went to see her not knowing what to expect. And to her amazement, her bed had been elevated, so she was almost sitting completely upright. She was dressed in a fresh gown, and her eyes were wide open, and she was completely lucid. And they were able to say what they needed to say to each other. They expressed their love, their appreciation, their forgiveness, their gratitude. And it was hard for Cheryl to talk, but she managed to. And then she fell into a deep sleep, and hours later, she left. It was an incredible experience of healing grace. I was, um, I thought I wasn't going to do this today. I was praying for her peaceful passing, as were our chaplains here at Unity North. And uh, I appreciate that, as it was. You know, when considering the question of who was Jesus, one cannot deny the encounters of countless people, not just in his time, but through all of the years since up to the present day. That's what's so amazing. How does one explain the miracle of a little terminally ill girl whose parents, <laughs> sorry, my throat lessons, whose parents um, said their final goodbye, but then the girl was healed by the touch of Jesus. Or how does one explain a psychotherapist who's walking along and turns and there's Jesus walking beside her? Or the shock and incredulous wonder of a woman who reached out and touched his hair as he was kneeling beside her in prayer. One man felt shame as he 
railed against the unavailability of God only to turn and find Jesus smiling warmly at his unbelief. River agrees. <laughs> Lara's doctors were sure the girl was dying. She, her mother, and her father had all contracted scarlet fever, but her illness had progressed into spinal meningitis, for which there was no medical treatment at the time. And the doctors told her parents they could do nothing and that she would die an excruciating death. Her parents were advised not to remain with her to witness her last days. Now, that was a long time ago, and that's truly unbelievable when we think about that now. But she remembers her parents and Reverend Lang throwing kisses and waving goodbye to her from the door of the hospital room. And then she remembers nothing but a sea of pain. Later, after losing her, her eyesight, she was lying on her right side when she heard a voice behind her, Lara, turn over. And she said, no, I can't, it hurts too much. Please come on the other side of the bed. And the voice said again, Lara, I promise you it will not hurt, turn over. And when she did, there was Jesus. And as an adult, she can't remember what they said, but she knows they spoke. And then he reached out and touched her twisted leg. And years later, or at that time, I back up. After he touched her leg, she was in the hospital room and then the nurse came in and the nurse um, heard her describing what beautiful hair the nurse had. And the nurse was stunned. She realized she was improving. Her vision had returned. And she ran to get the doctors. And the doctors came in and they started asking questions. The little girl was very shy. There were too many doctors and too many questions. But she could talk to Reverend Lang. He was one that she wasn't too shy to talk to. So she told him what happened. And then years later as an adult, she heard that he was speaking nearby. So she went to hear him preach. And in the middle of his talk, he brought up a little girl who he once knew who was dying, but was healed through the touch of Jesus. So it was their own story. There are countless stories of people who've had personal experiences. I'm one of them, having had several profound encounters that permanently changed my life. But even then, I would never think of Jesus in the context of Lord and Savior, or only Son of God. My personal belief is that of unity, that he did live. He did wake up and become enlightened, and that he showed us a way to wake up also. I do like to think of the human Jesus and his life, and I love the idea that each of us has the potential to do what he did and even greater things. Also the fact that there's a profound spiritual presence available to us for healing that often appears in his form is of great significance to me as well. I think of Jesus, the Christ of one, not as some abstract image from the past, but a living reality, just as a loved one who passes remains with us because of their essence and their qualities so does the compassionate presence that gave us the teaching of love and forgiveness 2,000 years ago continue to give it to us now. The voice of God is still speaking to us through Jesus and other great beings who've been willing to join in the great work of our at one -ment. Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, said in his book, Jesus Christ Heals, any declaration one may make in which the name Jesus Christ is used reverently will contact the spiritual ether in which the Christ I am lives and will open the mind and body to the inflow of spiritual healing rays. And that's good to remember, for we all still want healing, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual. 
You know, in unity, we distinguish between Jesus the man and Christ the consciousness that he attained. God is everywhere present, and Christ is the perfect divine idea or pattern of wholeness in all of creation. I love the expression cosmic Christ. So Jesus names some very specific conditions that are prerequisites to the occurrence of miracles. He said, have faith and doubt not. And that's a faith so focused, the nagging doubts of disbelief are suspended and your whole person is synchronized with the creative realm of possibility. He said, all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. So it's through prayer that we make our connection with the divine so miracles become possible. He said also, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. In unity, we say his name is I am. I am is always a state of fulfillment. How are we using our I am? Are we affirming I am sick, I am broke, I am unhappy? Are we affirming I am healthy, I am whole, I am prosperous, I am filled with faith? He said, if two of you shall agree on earth in anything that you shall ask, it shall be done for you of my Father which is in heaven. That is, if two of us are in loving resonance, then our energy is amplified, extended throughout our earth and heaven, and our mutual creative intention is assured. We then become co-creators with God. Author Jean Houston said, as I've studied the nature of the miracles that Jesus performed, I've observed a remarkable phenomenology in the nature and practice of his healing. First, he rapidly induced a surprised or altered state of consciousness. Second, he informed the sick person of his or her release from psychological defilement, or what we would call old tapes or beliefs. Third, he usually uttered an authoritative word or command that often produced a shock. Fourth, he frequently touched the sick one in order to reinforce and direct his verbal command, or he healed many long distance or through surrogates. Jesus also experienced a shift in his own consciousness and was in a state of oneness and empathy with the other person. Then he directed the chi energy or heightened field energy and amplified the fields within and about the person with the power of love. So we know he used spiritual practices, including both fasting and prayer. We're told he prayed for hours at a time, sometimes all night long. And most important of all, Jesus was in love with God, shown in part by the intimate way in which he addressed God as Abba, which in Aramaic is the equivalent of Papa. His tradition typically used much more formal terms of address. And he also used female imagery to describe God, referring to Sophia as the feminine name for divine wisdom. He saw God as personal, imminent, and totally loving and nurturing. You know, we can tell from the writings, he was completely and utterly awestruck by the divine, fully in love and trusting in God's will for good, and a living, loving example of compassion in the world. In closing, I invite you to think about and meditate on some of the healing stories of Jesus, especially as we approach Easter. Think of both the man and the consciousness he expressed, which is the true healer. Call upon him or the Christ consciousness he attained for your own healing in whatever form you desire it. If we choose to live our lives at the level of Christ consciousness, then we too must stand in a state of wonder and awe before the universe, a state of love and oneness with God and one another. It is from that place 
that we are healed and that we also become the healers that we are. You know, we are not healed by fighting the illness or problem as much as we are by aligning ourselves with the divine presence. And then the healing comes from that place. Remember, Jesus reminded us, you can do what I do and even greater things. So God's healing power moves in and through all of us right now. We open our hearts and minds to the healing power of the Christ, and we give thanks in advance for whatever healing takes place this day. And so it is. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Reverend Kathy. To tell you about the song I sang before, uh, Reverend Kathy's lesson is called Take Me to the Alley, and it's by the artist Gregory Porter. I think it's important when that you know those things in case you're struck by a particular song. And this one is by Simon Weber. I've been sitting in the darkness, but the sunlight's creeping in. Now the ice is slowly melting in my soul and in my skin. All oh, the good times, my friend, yeah, they're coming around again. I've been thinking, reminiscing of better nights and better days. Hiding in the refuge of memories I made. I got a feeling within. Oh, it's coming around again. It's coming around again. We've been so long waiting for the all time high. They got a damn good reason to put your troubles aside. And all your winter sorrows hang him out to dry. Just throw them away, gotta throw it away. All the colorful days, my friend, are coming around again. I got someone waiting for me. It's been so long since we met. And I may not be their salvation, but I'll offer nonetheless. And if, like me, you want to take that dance, it's coming around again. It's coming around again. We've been so long waiting for the all-time high. We got a damn good reason to put your troubles aside. And all our winter sorrows hang them on to dry. Throw it away. Gotta throw it away, all the colorful days, my friend, are coming around again. I can feel the change of fortune, no more riding on my love. Feel the wind is off my shoulders, and feet are now unstuck. And all the good times on which we do depend, coming around. So long waiting for the all time high. We have a damn good reason to leave our troubles aside. And all the wings tomorrow, but it'll hang them out to dry. Just throw them away, throw them, throw them away. All the colorful days, my friend, are coming around again. Thank you, Judy. I think you've got a backup singer in the making back there. She's coming. All right. Well, we have reached the point in our service when we pause to bless our offering.
So the blessing is on the screen behind me. If you would say that with me, please. Divine love flowing through me now blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. Gratitude before me, gratitude behind me, gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above me, gratitude before me, gratitude within me, gratitude all around me. I am so grateful. I'm so grateful, 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 I'm so grateful. Thank you. All right, community news. Healing, according to Charles Fillmore with Reverend Kathy, has unfortunately had to be canceled. If you would please stay posted, we will make sure you are aware of any future classes that are on the calendar. Cleaning day at Unity North is today after the service. If you are available, we ask you to stay and help us beautify the inside of our building. And I think Christine Grinzel is going to be the one to coordinate that. So if you're able to stay, please get in touch with Christine and she can send you where you need to go. Easter Sunday flower service. Sunday, April 9th at 1030 a.m. Please join us for our Easter service. The lesson is called Rise Up. Our soloist will be Sarah Raker, and Nancy Helvig will be on the piano, a woman of many talents. So please come and join us for the flower ceremony. We have a potluck right after the service, and the drumming that we sometimes, some of us remember that we had um, before. Easter drumming will be back. So. Please put that on your calendar. That's Sunday, April 9th. Game Day for All will be on Sunday, April 16th at 1130 a.m. So that will be right after the service. So children of all ages are invited to join us for a day of games. There will be snacks provided, or you are certainly welcome to bring your own. Unity North is hosting a fundraiser. We are partnering with Baker Square in Riverdale in Coon Rapids. That is tomorrow, March 27th, from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Please um, sign up online so that we can keep track of everyone who is intending to go to that. If you do tend to decide to show up um, without signing up, please just let them know that you are there for the Unity North benefit. And then we will get 20% of all sales coming back to the church for that event. So that is tomorrow. Also, understanding ourselves and others, um, the travel and aid adventures of a white family in Namibia with Erin Kaspar Fret. Erin is in the back, and I'm sure she can answer any questions you might have, but please do join us via Zoom on Wednesday, April 19th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. so the family can share their experiences in Namibia. Finally, Gateway Channelers is meeting as they have been on Saturday, April 4th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. You're welcome to contact Michelle Case if you have any questions 
Her number is listed there on the screen. We want to welcome our new board of trustees. Uh, president is Moira Bailey. Moira is currently, I think, across the hall with the little ones. I don't see her in the sanctuary. So Moira is our new board president. Vice president is Erin Kaspar Frett. She is in the back of the sanctuary. Secretary is Christine Grinzel, who is coordinating the cleaning efforts today. Treasurer is Cindy Huberty. I saw Cindy online. Do you want to wave, Cindy, so we can see you? There she is. Awesome. Our trustee is Bill Roloff, and another trustee is Jennifer Flynn. Did I see Jennifer in the sanctuary today? There she is. I thought I saw her this morning. So that is our new board. Make sure that you take a, a moment to introduce yourself if you don't know who they are. Any feedback you may have, um, you can give that to any of those board members. Finally, Wendy Erickson is our prayer chaplain this morning. So if you wish for prayer support for anything, please contact Wendy. I see that her phone number is listed there in the chat. And with that, I'm going to turn things back over to Reverend Kathy. Okay. Thank you so much, Rhonda. And thank you to our producers of the service today, Tracy and Nancy. Thank you. And a special thank you to our guest musician, Judy. Wonderful, as always. And now um, let's together say our intention, prayerful intention, our affirmation. Together, centered in prayerful intention, we give thanks for an overflowing abundance of spiritual awakening, prosperity, new members, and children for Unity North Spiritual Center. And so it is. And I invite you to stand as we speak our prayer for protection and then sing our peace song. Together. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Let there be peace on earth and let it 